So you want to become a better drifter in Forza Horizon 4. Well, this is the easy guide, the quickest guide. The video quality sucks. The audio quality sucks. I apologize for all of that. But for the freaking nuts and bolts of the situation we're talking about here, the nitty gritty, this is what you need to know for beginners, out the box, any car. doesn't matter if it's a four-door, two-door, a luxury car, a freaking old school 80s Volkswagen like this is. It all applies the same, and obviously everything needs to be tweaked out a little bit differently. So let's check out the tune. Try to make this video as short as possible. Tire pressure, crank it up. Obviously a high volume PSI, not bars. Depending on which area of the world you're in, you might have to do a change to adjustment. Let me uh, make sure this focuses actually. There we go, that's better. 45 for the front, 40 for the rear. If you have more horsepower, you don't have to mess around with that as much. Um, the weight of the vehicle also comes into play, but those are, you know, things you'll find out once you start tuning. And don't be afraid to tune your car. That was my biggest worry when I started drifting, is I'd go online and look up everyone else's tunes, or you download a tune and hope it works. And don't mind my dog walking around, jingle jangling. But I, I didn't want to mess my car up. You can always reset it back to factory and then go from there. Or if you just watch this video real quick, this will explain the easiest setup. Final drive, 4.10 towards acceleration because you want that that's my usually go to some cars like you said like I said got more speed more horsepower I should say you can have it more on the speed side because you have enough horsepower to break the tires loose older car like this Volkswagen only has 700 horsepower so 410 it's a good medium ground start there go from there alignment here's a big one crank this down if you're really really new at drifting almost bring the rear uh, camber to zero basically because they'll keep you your ass end from getting away from you too quickly. Um, the 1.5 that it gives you off the get-go is for really low horsepower cars. The higher the camber, negative at least for the rear tire, the easier it is to break the tires loose because they're at such an angle. Toe, 1.5 positive in the front, 1.5 negative in the rear. That is a big, big difference in just the control of the car when you're going sideways. If you get the car sideways and immediately the, the ass end leaves, you know, starts going in front of the, the front end or whatever, or vice versa, the front end, you can't get it to control. Mess around with the toe. This is what my standard go-to is, 1.5 on each side. Negative, positive, bam, good to go. Anti-roll bars, springs, dampering, eh. That's, that's personal preference. You can tweak that a little bit. I noticed with the Formula Drift cars, their suspension is a lot softer in the rear. So take that with whatever information you want to take that with, grain of salt, so to speak. Dampering, same thing. Arrow, it doesn't obviously matter if you have arrow pieces on there. Have those towards speed, more or less, so you don't have too much push down on the car. Braking force. I usually put it more towards the rear for control, especially if you do some tandem drifting with friends. Brake force in the rear is going to be great. Uh, the brake pressure. I've heard if you have the traction control on, it doesn't really work too well. Like, you can turn it up to, like, 200% or whatever it goes to max. And because you have traction control on, it doesn't really work that way. So you'll have to turn your traction control off if you want to experience the full brake pressure that you mess around with. Differential. Acceleration to 100%. Deceleration, bring it down to at least 60. That's where my good go-to is for, for any drift car, 60. It starts out with 75, which you can get away with. But when you let off the gas, which you're going to be doing a lot if you just don't want to hold the red line, basically. <clears throat> you don't want your car to slow down so much where it throws you off of your corner or off of your line of your drift so do that and you'll be good to go and that's my go-to setup for any drift car any car any car that you want to be a drift car i should say there we go i've had too much coffee today as you can see i'm racing <laughs> in more ways than one
There you go. In less than five minutes now, you know how to be a professional drifter, or at least tune your vehicle like a professional. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, whatever you do. I appreciate it. You guys have a good day, and we'll see you in the next one.